Paul Heyman. He replaced uh, Stephanie as the SmackDown GM. Man. And uh, I think EC did. But, yeah, he he was great. Paul yeah. Heyman was great back then. He's still, still the same today. You want to talk about a ruthless general manager. That's – that's a guy that and not only does he have Brock Lesnar with him everywhere he goes, but, you know, he makes sure he has the right enforcement with him. You know, like if you don't agree with something Paul Heyman says, he's going to make you pay for it. He's going to make you pay for it. Yep. And I, I just, you know, I mean, he, he's, he's good at what he does. He's good at general managing. He's good at managing just in, in general. <laughs> he's good at managing. I mean, this is the guy that we saw ECW thrive with for mm-hmm. a long time. Well, for a good few years. <laughs> no, no, it was a while. But, yeah, Paul Heyman definitely deserves to be up here. Number oh, yeah. five, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, Stone definitely up here. The best thing about Stone Cold was he was, at, he was done wrestling, but this was where his comedic side really showed. And, you know, coming out on the RV, the ATV, you know, driving around the ring and the little uh, sheriff badge that he had and just everything was great. Him, and don't let me forget, him and Eric Bischoff, the chemistry that they had playing off each other was wonderful. All he did was drink beer the whole time. Like, it's so cold. Like, he did more than that. I know, but like, that's the one thing I remember from it is just him <laughs> drinking beer. Like this is where I think Stone Cold became an alcoholic. If he if he's just not then, one, if he's just not figured, one, then. <laughs> you just figured out he was then. Well, yeah, but he was wrestling then, so he could he'd he could burn. Out. Yeah, he'd work off that you know alcohol. But then he's not working. What is he doing? Riding on his little <laughs> AV. The <laughs> the him him and Eric Bischoff, the redneck triathlon they had oh god it was at one of the pay-per-views was outstanding was hilarious <laughs> and it was here in charlotte so that helped <laughs> so but yes it you know stone cold where speaking of which i read something that he should be back on tv soon so we'll see what probably to, to promote his podcast yeah uh but he definitely deserves to be up here number oh, four course. we have mr tag team uh teddy long Mr. Tag Team. Yeah, because oh, he yeah. make a tag team out of everything. everything Let's make the did. first ever 10-man tag team match. You're talking about a guy that almost held every... He held almost every position besides a wrestler in the WWE business. He was a ref. He was a general manager. He was a manager. I mean, he was almost everything except for an announcer... And a wrestler. You know, I look at this list, and there's one person that has worked their way up from everything, and it's Teddy Long. Yeah. Because when he was in WCW, or NWA, excuse me, he was the janitor. Or he was basically the do-all, whatever they needed, he did it. Yeah. You know, he cleaned up. He did whatever he had to do. do. And then they gave him a uh, manager spot. Or referee, excuse me. Then yeah. they gave him a manager, and then he worked. So He did you know, everything. He did everything possible. Uh, but he definitely deserves to be up here. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. During that period, SmackDown was very entertaining. I used to watch SmackDown all the time. Yeah, I mean, I uh, think SmackDown's ratings actually went up during that time just because of the whole tag team thing he did. Like you said, I mean, he made like – he would make two uh, people or two main eventers tag team together just just as the main event. Just to get people to like it. I mean, gosh. Guy's amazing. <laughs> Who's next on the list over uh, there? Let me see. Number three, Eric Bischoff. Dude. No Eric one Bischoff. every no one ever thought that they would have him be on T V. <laughs> Man, when he came back, that was a shocker. I mean, you talk about a guy that wanted to run wwe out of business and then vince mcmahon signs him you sign him you thought nwo was bad signing nwo but no you signed eric bischoff the guy that tried to get you out of business what do you think mike i mister i've got to disagree with everything that everybody else is saying oh he's disagreeing that doesn't happen ever uh anyway Thanks, Mike. Thanks for that uh, lovely. Oh, gosh. 
It's one of those days, folks. <laughs> uh, speaking of Teddy Long. Player, player, player. Hey, thank you, JP, with that great insight. That was what Teddy Long's favorite. Oh, is anybody still out there? <laughs> Hey, I think they they're still listening after the opening oh, of the God. song. Give me a break. The interview. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, number two is Vicky Guerrero. You know, man, what can you say about Vicky? I'm I, I'm I'm not surprised that she's she's high up in the list because the one, God, the one person could say two words that would aggravate the heck out of you. I never thought "excuse me" would make me cringe. Sometimes, I mean, the way she said it, I've got something to say about that. Cougar power <laughs> and people. Power. Yep, cougar power and people power, man, on this list. Cougar power and people power. Yeah. Well, I didn't know it was called cougar power. I knew it was cougars, but not cougar. If power. you talk to JP, it's it, well. <laughs> if you talk to JP, it's a lot more than just cougar power. It's every power. <laughs> Do what? People power. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. Uh, anyway, Vicky deserves to be on here. I mean, she, uh, her, what her and Edge did with SmackDown during that period was outstanding. Uh, I mean, that was the highest point, one of the highest points in SmackDown. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, it, I, I really have to say after the whole thing with Eddie, you know, after the whole thing with Eddie Guerrero, you know, after his passing and everything, I think she really – you saw her evolve. Yeah. Um, she really well, – She was on TV. And yeah. No, I mean, at first, I did. I was like, what is she doing there? And yeah. she just played her – no one played their character on this list better, I think. No, I agree with you on that. I mean, she – you know, she – excuse me. Why do you think excuse me worked all those years? Yeah. I mean, well, I mean yeah. because – I mean, heck, the one person that could get a pop off of two words like that. She uh, is. She's then, one of those people. Then you got the cougar. You know, she started wearing that. She with younger uh, guys. And, you know, she yeah. even wrestled uh, with Lay Cool at WrestleMania. I remember know? that. So uh, she, she. That was against Snooki, right? Uh, was Snooki on that? No, that that was uh, Mickey James and them. Uh Oh, yeah. That that was a different that was a different match though, uh, but then we had number one is Mick Foley on the countdown list. I don't care what you say, man. What? One of the best, one of the best commissioners of all time. Oh, he what he did, <laughs> what he did was awesome, man. As a commissioner, I I actually watched Mick Foley's um uh, documentary recently and. He even said, like, you know, he didn't really think he was going to come back to the WWE or anything after WrestleMania 2000. He didn't think he was going to come back. He thought he was done. And then he said he got a phone call, and it's like, how would you like to be the commissioner? So, you know, he went back and did that, and he said he, he thinks the commissioner was the best thing he ever did in the WWE. For the six months he did it, he said he just wished he did it a lot longer. Mm-hmm. I, I really think it was. I mean, no, he, dude, he. I just love the wacky setup he had. The <laughs> the moving desk that he always had, uh, and he did what was always right. He, and he had like fifty he was cactuses funny. everywhere he went. There was like fifty cactuses in the background anywhere he was. One week he's in a boiler room. Next week well, he's in the janitor's closet. And then, <laughs> I mean, well, gosh. you got and the other thing is, Rim Regal did it the other way. You know, dressed nice, this and that. <laughs> then you got Mick Foley. Whatever, I just got out of bed. <laughs> yeah, that's what I loved about it. And this is like right after he shaved his head too. Yep. Like he shaved his head because he didn't think he was ever going to come back to WWE, and then he. He's right back in there, man. Right back in the saddle again. But yeah, those just some of them. Uh, but Mick Foley, I think, deserves to be number one. I don't care what anybody else says. Uh, let's see if JP's got anything else to say over. Here. Nope. Uh, but yeah, uh, he definitely deserves to be right there uh, on our website, wrestlingattitude dot com. We had the poll up there. Uh, we had uh, Eric Bischoff had. Two votes, or no, one vote, and Mick Foley had one. 
Well, yeah. Or no, Mick Foley had two. Eric Bischoff had one. So what did Eric Bischoff vote for himself? Because nobody <laughs> votes for Eric Bischoff. No. Uh, <laughs> but we did have a poll of who was the best general manager of all time, and uh, the people voted for Mick Foley. I'm surprised Brad Maddox wasn't on there, man. Well, he's on the <laughs> you mean on the countdown list? <laughs> yeah. Well, let's we'll talk about that. Uh, you know, before we add other, before we do others, let's talk. We did have a couple tweets this week uh, no. for your best managers of all time. Uh, all one right. was from Fourth Quarter Radio. Uh, we had he had number ten. Who's number ten? Number nine was Bret Hart. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Bret, what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Bret Hart was, was manager. Yeah, he w- I thought he was just for one show, but yeah, he's got Bret Hart is number nine. He's got Mick Foley as number eight. Uh, Stephanie Mann number seven. Bischoff number six. Stone Cold number five. I kind of agree with that because Stone Cold goes with Bischoff. Uh, John Laronitis, four. Vicky, three. Shane O'Mac, number two, who it, briefly he was. And then number one was A.J. Lee. He voted, Yeah, of, of course. course. Of course it's A.J. Lee. Thanks, fourth quarter. We don't know who you are, but thanks. Thanks for that A.J. Lee comment over there. Too many AJ Lee con- uh, AJ Lee people in the world. Too many. <laughs> too many. We got too many. We got one on the show, and then we got a guy tweeting us that likes it. Come on, get your head straight, people. So, <laughs> but then we have, um, you know, but that was some of the other people. Uh, others that you know could have been on the list: Kurt Angle, Tiffany when she was at. Uh, I forgot about Kurt Angle. Yeah, man. You, for, you forget about Kurt Angle. For, for a very short, uh, short. Tiffany, uh, ECW, uh, Brad Maddox, uh, Brad Maddox, Maddox. Uh, Mike Adamley, oh, AJ okay. Lee, oh, okay. and of course Quacky Quack Quack Quack, quack uh, Booker T. Quack Quack, quack. Is, is that is Ducky that? Quack Quack Duck or whatever he says. That sounds like something Mark True said. <laughs> He's, it was the worst thing ever on commentary. Oh, my god! But Booker T uh, is another one. Who would you take off? Would you take would you take any of these guys, ladies off and put somebody else on? I really wouldn't. Tell you the truth, I would I would move uh, Stephanie McMahon down the line, though. I'd put her at I, – I'd, I'd want to say uh, I'd put her at uh, – who was number five? Uh, Stone Cold. I put her above Stone Cold. I put her at, or I mean, uh, below Stone Cold. I put her at six. You put and her at six? Yeah. All right. I put so her Paul at Heyman, six. you're moving down. Yeah. Where's Paul Heyman going? Uh, I'd I'd put him above Stephanie because I mean I I like Stephanie as a GM. I think she did pretty good. I mean because like I I feel like that was where she kind of shined a little bit as a GM. Like she was still kind of rusty, and she didn't know if she, like what she wanted to do. But um, like, because uh, I I went back and watched the whole thing with uh, I think this was like right after her GM thing where she uh, had to face Brock Lesnar or something like that on SmackDown, which was like I mean that that was a big that was a big deal right there because you know everybody thought she was going to quit that night. She never did. No, all right. So who? So, do you agree with number one? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I agree with Mick Foley being there, man. Uh, I, AJ Lee, I want to say I would add, but I don't think I would, actually. Uh, Brad Maddox, no. <laughs> uh, Kurt Angle. I, actually, I would put Kurt Angle up there. Who I would. Him? Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, <laughs> I would actually probably move Larry Nias up. Uh, I'm taking the anonymous GM off. That's coming off. The list. What? That is coming off the list because it's horrible the way they ended it. Okay. When you did it, the whole, I'm thinking of the whole picture. They, they had something great. Then they blew it, giving it a horn swaggle. So he's coming off the list. Uh, and I would add, like I said, I would add Kurt Angle to number ten. Now I'll push mm-hmm. everybody down. <laughs> I, I just he, you know, horrible man. No Matt, Mike Adamley? No Mike Adamley? Uh, Adamley was <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm not going to respond to that. Uh, next week on the show, 
uh, our top ten will be 